We're not quite close enough to an election for the Obama administration to blame the Paris attacks on a YouTube video. So for now at least, everyone is acknowledging that these were bona fide terrorist attacks, not protests that got a little out of hand. But given that these were terrorist attacks, we still have to ask, what caused these attacks? Was it A, climate change, B, income inequality, C, Islamophobia, D, joblessness, E, Starbucks coffee cups, or F, Muhammad's repeated commands to wage terrorist attacks? Thanks to the power of social media to spread complete nonsense, we've all been assured that the answer can't have anything to do with Muhammad because the Quran supposedly declares that if anyone kills a man, it's as if he has killed all mankind. I see this same verse misquoted over and over again. Here's an example. And another. And another. And some more. And some more. And some more. Notice two remarkable things about this verse of the Quran. One, no one ever quotes the entire verse, and two, no one ever quotes the verse that comes after it. Why do the people who quote this verse leave most of it out? And why don't they ever quote the verse that comes after it? It's because if you read the passage without leaving something out, you'll immediately see that it actually commands the sorts of attacks that we just saw in Paris. Let's read chapter 5, verse 32, and see what our friends omitted. Because of that, we ordained for the children of Israel, we ordained for the children of Israel, Allah ordained for the children of Israel, that if anyone killed a person not in retaliation of murder or to spread mischief in the land, it would be as if he killed all mankind. And if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved the life of all mankind. And indeed, there came to them our messengers with clear proofs, evidences, and signs even then, after that, many of them continued to exceed the limits, Halali and Khan add as commentary, e.g. by doing oppression unjustly and exceeding beyond the limits set by Allah by committing the major sins in the land. So, the Quran says that this teaching was ordained for the children of Israel, the Jews. In fact, we know exactly where this comes from in the Jewish writings. This verse quotes the Talmud, Mishnah Sanhedrin, chapter 4, which was a popular passage among the Jews of Arabia, during Muhammad's time. It's kind of ironic that the most peaceful verse in the entire Quran happens to be a quotation from the Jewish Talmud. In Surah 5, verse 32, Allah explains what was ordained for the Jews. So what did Allah ordain for Muslims? The answer is found in the very next verse. Surah 5, verse 33 declares, the recompense of those who wage war against Allah and against his messenger and do mischief in the land is only that they shall be killed or crucified or their hands and their feet be cut off from opposite sides or be exiled from the land. That is their disgrace in this world and in a great torment is theirs in the hereafter. Verse 32 is about what Jews are supposed to do in the land that Allah gave them. Verse 33 is about what Muslims are supposed to do if someone commits the vague crime of doing mischief. If you do mischief in a Muslim land, Muslims are supposed to kill you or crucify you or, for lesser crimes, chop off body parts or exile you. So, what counts as mischief? Lots of things. Apostasy, preaching a religion other than Islam, adultery, becoming too westernized, things like that. If you violate Sharia, you're making mischief. By opposing Sharia, you've declared war on Allah, and you have to pay. The most extreme form of mischief, of course, is launching a military attack against a Muslim community. That's definitely a death penalty. Now, according to Islamic teachings, not according to your opinion, according to Islamic teachings, has France made any mischief in Muslim countries? Yes, a lot. And according to Surah 5, verse 33, what's the penalty for the actions of the French military? Because of what the French military has done in Muslim lands? Death. So French military personnel are obviously under a death sentence. What about French civilians? Well, in Sunan Ibn Majah 2759 and Sahih al-Bukhari 2843, Muhammad said that people who equip soldiers receive the same reward as the soldiers. 
In other words, it's not just the soldiers who are guilty and deserve death, it's also the people who fund the military, the people who pay the bills so that soldiers can be soldiers. They're just as responsible, according to Muhammad. So who pays for the French military to make mischief in Muslim countries? The French government, which is funded by French taxpayers, ordinary French civilians. So if the average French civilian is just as responsible for causing problems in Muslim countries as the French soldiers who fight in Muslim countries, what's the penalty? Death. Now think about this. Surah 5 verse 33 of the Quran justifies attacks not only against French military targets, but also against everyone who supports the French military in any way. This verse justifies the terrorist attacks that just killed well over 100 people in Paris. But instead of quoting verse 33, Islam's Western apologists go to the verse before it. They cut out the part about this being a teaching of the children of Israel, a quotation from the Talmud, and they claim that their severely edited, distorted verse ripped from its context proves that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance, and that anyone who does what the very next verse commands is not a true Muslim. Now, what does this sort of misrepresentation and deception ultimately accomplish? It's great for convincing westernized Muslims who don't bother reading the text that their religion condemns terrorist attacks, and it's great for convincing non-Muslims who don't bother reading the text that Islam condemns terrorist attacks. But twisting and distorting a Quran passage until it means the exact opposite of what it actually says will never change the minds of the people who read the text and are willing to do what it says. So the only thing these social media campaigns can hope to achieve is to lull us all to sleep until the next terrorist attack, a terrorist attack that's inevitable because we never confront the actual ideology that's been driving these attacks for nearly 14 centuries. What can we do to stop the deception and misdirection so that we can eventually have an open, honest discussion about Muhammad's teachings? Lots of things, most of them involving a careful study of the Muslim sources. But one easy step is for you to track down tweets and Facebook posts and comments that mislead people about Surah 5 verse 32 of the Quran until people stop misquoting it. There are only a handful of passages in the Quran that can be stretched into a condemnation of terrorism. The sooner we get past them, the sooner our Muslim friends will have a more accurate picture of Islam so that they can finally decide whether this book is worth following.